Hey guys, let me get this camera adjusted. Yeah, <laughs> Eric, you're absolutely right. OBS has some really neat tricks, but uh, it can be a pain to use. So Friday, I think it was, that I streamed, I built a part of one of the uh, wings. This is a full wing, and what I figured I'd do is show you guys today how to get... Let me find the one that's loose. Oh, it's right here. How to get this LED and this clear part installed in here. And like I said, like I've said before, this kit is no glue. It is absolutely a dream because there is no glue. Because something like this, if it was glued, there's no way you'd be able to do it. So the first thing I got to do, let me be careful, this thing is huge. First thing I got to do is pull this nozzle off the back end here. Once I do, and I think I showed you guys this on Friday. Once I do, I'll push this part, the baffles, and this clear part out. Clear part needs to be adjusted. The uh, center part to actually fit this part into it has to be drilled out. And more of it needs to be drilled out than I expected because there are no pins on here, or there are short, very short pins on here. They're not really to attach it. There, I'm guessing that's probably where it just molded into the uh, mold. Because he also makes this kit, this kit for the uh, smaller scales as well. I think he goes as far as 139th. So this can, has to be pulled off. And this is the part we're going to be matching up to that baffle. This gets set aside. And this will go into a scrap bin. So the next step, and this was where I was I was worried I wasn't going to be able to do it. There's these three caps. There's screws under here. And to get those caps out, you've got to have something. They're not magnetic. They're just friction fit. Long time ago, I bought these mic sticky micro sticks that I've never used for anything. And if you look, there's a little blob of glue on there. That's better. There's a little blob of, not glue so much, but sticky stuff on there. And I thought about it and I was like, okay, let me give it a shot. And it was perfect because I took it, sat it on there like that, pushed it down. It doesn't come out the first time always. Of course, now that I'm on camera, it's not going to come out at all. Now, let me try this one here. While I'm thinking about it, let me sit, let that set in there. So it'll hold. Where is my screw box? As I'm taking parts off, I'm going to put them in here in order that they come off so that I don't lose them. So maybe now it'll come off. Try another one of these. These things are relatively old. I had them when I was in California, so that says they're probably at least three or four years old. Like I said, I haven't used them a lot, but they're what they're supposed to be tweezer replacements, basically. And they're not playing f nice today. I don't want to take a blade in here and possibly damage that. Okay. Now, well, let me try, try an exacto because there is actually a lip on this one. Matter of fact, let me try because I got another wing over here. 
let me see if this one will cooperate. Best plate laid plans of mice and men, guys. Ah, there. That's how it's supposed to come off. You see right there, a little cap came off. Just takes a little bit of finesse and messing with it. And just being obstinate and continuing to keep pushing it. <laughs> These other ones are going to be a pain in the behind, and these are out of the way where you aren't going to really see them. So, come on. melted the green ones are not and they say smart hold let's see if it's got more power to pull it off maybe they are Donnie I feel it it's about to come loose come on yeah the glue is about to come loose from the stick there's the second one and now it doesn't want to let go of the stick. And these, the actual design of these things is for small parts that you don't want to, that you don't want to risk using a uh, set of tweezers on. Because we've, I'm sure we've all had that random part that you're working with, holding it with the tweezers, and it just pings off into never to be seen land. Never to be seen again, land. You know, the first three, actually, on the other, the wing that I first did, came off just perfect. Many from the Jolly... Oh, many parts shot off into space, never to be seen again. I believe it. I'm guessing probably a lot of cannon parts have uh, ran away and hid. There we go. That was probably the hardest part of this entire mod. So I'll close that. There's my screwdriver. And actually, th this will give you guys an opportunity to see a lot of the detail parts that will disappear into the model forever. There will be some cracking and popping as I'm taking parts off. That's because they're very tightly fit. O-rings. Ah, uh, yeah. So you lost the, um, I forget what they're called. I know what you're talking about, though. So this is just a cover, and imagine that. The wires have come loose. They're actually supposed to be down into these pins. I will fix that as I'm putting it back together. So let me go ahead and set this engine bell and lens it aside because I'm not going to be modding it on that engine. Let me get this pulled off of here and not hopefully knock over the camera. Okay. This is 
just set in there with pins. The uh, pins just the pins are just snap fit, so it actually is not that hard to get off. I never noticed that. This de the details on this are exactly the same as the other side of the engine. Best way I found to get this off was to use my flat exacto. Oh yes, first things first. This has this detail that we worked on last time has got to come off. It is in the way. Once that is off, I can slip the 18 exacto blade up inside of here and pry it, pry with it just enough to where then I can get my flathead screwdriver in. And that is pretty much loose from here. There's another pin down here. Last time when I did this, I actually started pulling down over top of these engine parts here. Heard a crack, stopped because I don't want to have to re-glue those. Those were a pain. There's a little gap here. And the popping is just the pins coming loose. Got a small gap here now. And that comes off just like that. And then we're down to one more screw and three more parts to come out. This screw pulls this part in, drop the screw in there. I would love to take it out at this point, but it won't come out because there's a part down here that's attached. So at this point, I have to pull these two pieces off here, very gently pry with the screwdriver, avoiding these pipes again. Oh, speaking of the carpet monster, I thought the tile monster Friday when I lost that um, laser, that blaster baffle, I thought the tile monster got it because I couldn't find it. It turned out the little tool caddy I've got next to me, it fell in there into one of the open drawers. Okay, almost. Come on. Be careful not to get that wire. That wire is actually supposed to be underneath this part, so I'll be fixing that too. Come on, don't. I think I might end up breaking this pin off, which means then I'll have to glue it in. I did. Broken pin. Well, that's because this is a mod. This is an aftermarket part. You know, and it doesn't say buy it before this step. <laughs> the uh, last engine, the fourth, the fourth engine, when I do it, I already have the parts so they'll go in without any problem. But to do it to the other three, I have to do it, I have to take it back apart. What's that? Come on. And another broken pin. Two broken pins, actually. I broke both of those pins. Of course, Donnie. Why would you look for it anymore once you find it? And this just kind of pulls up. This one is wanting to be a royal pin in my behind. And these pipes on this thing are a royal pain. You can see this one has come on glued. The 
The beauty of this is though that none of these parts will ever see the light of day again once I put this back in here. So if I break it, if I tear it out and just throw it away, nobody knows but me and you guys because it's on video right now. That's okay, Eric. Not a problem at all. I don't know if you guys can see that little gray baffle down there rocking back and forth. There's no screw holes on that side. underneath here that is supposed to be coming with this and it's not playing nice. If I can get it to come up the way it's supposed to be, let me get that, let's see if I can get that pin back in where it's supposed to be so it'll maybe come up. Let's see. Trying to find a piece of wire handy that is not part of the model. I'll be right back. Let me go over here and grab one out of my wire drawer. <laughs> Less cringeworthy, Eric, when you think about the fact that this stuff will never be seen again. Because I'm not buying the mods to put doors into the uh, thing so I can see it. Come on. There's a strut in the engine itself that I'm trying to get pushed out, which is holding it in place right now. but then it wouldn't be the actual ship the uh, clear parts so wasn't pretty but it came out now it's oh duh okay 
So there's going to be a little bit of repair work on this to get it back into shape because right here, these two pipes are supposed to, were glued into here. I don't know what to tell you, man. I have got it set for best latency and there's another pipe. And th this is stuff I will repair off screen because the main gist of what I'm doing is showing how to install this mod. Once this is out, I can set it aside. And this was a nightmare. These pipes weren't, were bad, but they were not too bad once I figured out how to put them in place. Make sure. These the rest of these pipes were all glued in. And some of these were, the directions are very unclear on how to get these into place. It's the fourth engine. I'm finally going to get these right on the fourth engine. And then once I get this back in place, everything will be able to go back in. That is supposed to be there. Maybe there is some something to be said about gluing some of this stuff together. So let me set this aside. Like I said, got repair work to do on that. So now I'm, I have access to the engine bay, which is what I really needed to get to this one screw here. Once that one screw is out, That's all the screws that have to come out. And once the screw is out, I grab, that's the blaster wire. I pull the wire for the engine out. Comes out just like that. You can set this aside. And this is, snap, is snugged in here because of the silver portion here. And there's a little ring, captive ring back here. All that ring does is hold the engine together. Again, using my number 18 blade, pry it out just enough to where I can pop that ring off without damaging it. Thank you. It is a very nice engine. It's lots of detail. Most of them, unfortunately, you'll never see again. And I, had, like I said earlier, I had never noticed this. The detail on the engine that's visible and the detail on the engine that, engine that's not visible are identical. As a matter of fact, this is even a better example of it because these up here are there as well. That's not supposed to be bent. So once that's there, loose, take apart. And this should look familiar because this is what we did yet uh, Friday. And pull this out. Very gently pull the rest of the engine assembly out. Trying not to break pins like I have already. And pull, this will get pulled out. So here. Hey, Spencer. How's it going? So here's the little bulb that we're replacing. And what I did, because I didn't know this was going to be this much of a pain in the behind to pull back apart. But instead of having you guys sit here while I drill the hole in here and drill the hole in here, I'm just gonna take these parts, this entire wing part, this entire wing that I just took apart and set them apart outside because I've gotta do the, that one anyway. I could say through the magic of YouTube, but that would be just totally, totally corny. So I, I, instead, I could, I'll could i say, through the magic of the DeLorean that I built over the last couple of years, 
I've come back in time, or come forward in time with these parts, which are the one that I, ones that I pulled apart the other day. And so to install this, what I've done to get this baffle, get this baffle and this huge LED into through in through these small parts, I could discard this one. I'm not going to. What I've done is I've drilled this out to where the whole thing is um, removed the whole center ring. I don't know if this is supposed to be the center ring was supposed to be drilled out that far, but that's the way I'm going to install it. It works really good for me. <laughs> I know we did, but I, this is really boring. And most of it was done across the room. I had to use the Dremel and then, uh, the hobby knife to cut it down. So to put this back together, first thing I got to do is get the LED through here. And this, the way it goes in here is it goes through the top here, into the engine, back out here. didn't check that hole. I may have to adjust that. I do have to adjust it. It's not quite large enough. I did not realize that was white plastic underneath. That is a really good paint job in these parts. Probably dipped it instead of painted it. There, pull as much of this wire as you think you can through because I'm not sure how far this is going to have to go inside the model itself. That goes, the LED is then ready to go back on here or the engine half and go back on here. Just sit on there like that. These, by the way, these are some really rubbery feeling wires. I feel like if I pull them, they'll stretch, which I don't want. And then the connector will go back through the hole in, gen in the engine right there. By the way, guys, those broken pins that I just caused those are perfect example of what I tell people that you know it's it's not the mistakes you make it's how good you can cover them up that counts so the ring will go back on here to hold this together I'm a dork before the ring goes back on there before this goes through the engine parts here of course, I now have to <laughs> have to pull this back off, but it's not near as bad. So what I forgot, guys, is this quote unquote reflector lens, whatever you want to call it. I want to keep this in there because one, it's reflective and two, it holds the front end of the engine together a lot better than it will normally. So to that end, I drilled up where the LED used to sit in here. I drilled it out pretty good so that the connector fits right through there. So now let me put this back through the engine parts. And 
pulling it through as much as I can think I need to. It's not my day. You ever put something together backwards and have to fix it? <laughs> That's what I just did because the lens is, or the uh, silvering is supposed to face towards the LED. And this part will then slide in here. And what they tell you to do with the LED, the original LED, which uh, they tell you to fold the legs over really fl flat like that, because you've got to make it straight through the, from the, uh, engine baffle through this lens piece. So you put that back on there. And see if that's right. One side has that side has there's a small keyway right there. So that should be enough slack. <laughs> it fits for mufflers. <laughs> So, come on. I actually have not watched Mandalorian at all. I know, probably a bad thing as a uh, Star Wars fan, but I'm more of a Star Trek fan or actually science fiction in general fan. Okay, and that is, I'll probably look into it sometime. <laughs> oh yeah well it's like Breaking Bad and uh, Walking Dead Breaking Bad I didn't watch until the full series was out Walking Dead was a long six series before I got into it you know and I'm kicking myself for getting into Better Call Saul as quickly as I did because they stopped making them for a while it's coming back eventually but I'm still, I'm jonesing for it. So now, instead of originally how this was pinned to the front of, front of here, instead of that, I'm going to just pop this in here. And I'm going to use I know I've got two of them. I don't know where the other one is. Could call this canopy glue. I'm going to call it what it really is. Elmer's. But I still don't, I don't want to use any CA in here. Because even though it's not going to be visible. I don't want to fog the uh, clear part. And I also don't know what CA would do to this resin. Slide this back in 
here. Make sure my keyway is good so it sits flush. The benefit of this too, doing it this way, Fear the Walking Dead. Yep. Eric, I, I agree with you. I still, I'm still watching The Walking Dead because it's like watching a train wreck. You can't not watch. So that's in there now. That's glued in. This, I've got to make sure that this little slot here is opposite of the keyway. And I wouldn't, I actually don't, probably don't have to glue this in there. Would help if, would help if the clear lens stays in there. So the one thing about Elmer's is it doesn't dry very fast at all. But the little key, the uh, round part is supposed to be opposite the keyway. So, and the bonus of having, of putting this in after the clear part is in, is you don't have to fight to get it to stay on there. To get it into the, um, in, to fit into the baffles, because this barely fits inside the hole there. So now, let me see. If I put that on, it's just going to push it right out. That'll push in there like that. That's a lot of extra wire in there. So let me pull this back out and see if I can get more wire out. I'm doing is I'm looking because once I'm looking to make sure that I've got just enough wire because once this is in there the clear part the, cl the circular clear part that I'm gluing in will stay there by the friction fit of the uh, engine behind it the clear part that go the baffles that go inside should be held in by the LED but I can glue it. Yeah, I'm going to have to glue it a little bit to push that further down in. don't need glue on this part because like I said it's going to be friction held so let me get the glue back off of there so I'm not messing with that it's all trial and error guys you know that Just had a thought. It's 
It's a nice detail. You're not going to see it. And it's in the way. That's coming off. So now, I should be able to pull this wire a little bit easier. heat shrink that was blocking it and that is actually pretty cool that he uses the same color heat shrink as he does the uh, wire finale and if anybody that didn't know that's what the coating on side outside of the uh, wire is you learned something today <laughs> Of course, now that I took the glue off the part, it's sticking in there. It's like, I like it here. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to actually get this whole thing back into the... That is never going to give me enough slack on that wire. Okay. If you don't like the side of broken plastic, turn away now because I'm doing surgery. Let's see, where are my... This end piece is in the way of the wire. And it's never visible. So, so I'm going to, or I just cut it off. Truthfully, you know what? I'm going further than that. It's nice detail. It's nice that you know it's, it's in there. I'm gutting the engine. Because otherwise it's going to just be keep getting in the way. The wires are thicker than the original. And it's keeping me from getting this in here the way I want. Now, if I put that on there like that, and like that. That works. That is. That is much better. I can actually put this. Once the uh, engine parts are back are in there, I'll be able to actually move this wire back and forth to get it to where I want it. 
So I'm leaving the parts in here. They're not in the way yet. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the outside of this LED. Keyway is directly on the top, it's on that side, so the circular part here, whoa. It's like the second time I've done that, gone to put a part on and remembered that I needed another part first. Okay, so... Should be able to pull that wire tight enough to hold that part in. Okay. This can go back together. The ring back on. You guys are awfully quiet. Live streaming, babe. Do you need something? No. Okay. My wife didn't know I was live streaming. And of course, it would help if I put the keyway in the right place. <laughs> no! The uh, baffle just fell inside. But now I've got this, I think I've got it to where I can get it all together. And true, never inter inter interrupt a man while he's gluing, he might glue you. To something. Of course, via the internet, that would be very impressive. Okay. Might glue that later, might not. I think it looks good. Oh, by the way, guys, remember I told you I lost one piece? That's the only piece of this thing that I've lost, and it is tiny. It looks just like that one there. So, just for giggles, let's make sure that I didn't blow the LED up or anything while I was doing that. Plug it in. Something I learned from Boyd from on Trap Quirks, never, ever, ever, if you can avoid it, turn on your power supply with your LEDs, your adjustable power supply with your LEDs connected. You don't want to blow the LEDs. So that's how that looks, guys. I like it. And I played with it a little bit yesterday. I don't remember if I did it on camera or not. But adjusting the pots. It's just, it's blowing out on the uh, camera. But it was red and then green. I like purple. So I'm probably... Actually, there. You can see the color. I like the purple. I'm probably leaving my uh, engines pur purple. Maybe. Maybe not. I have a while to figure that out. So. <clears throat> disconnect this. Disconnect the leads from the power. So I don't inadvertently blow that board out because I've done that before too I've uh, 
Rampart protected purple looks cool. Yeah, well, the power on the uh, on this board says it's good to up six up to uh, sixteen volts. I'm not going to run it above nine. I don't think I don't even think the uh, X-wing has that high of power rating on it. But it's one of these things that I have actually turned on a, the power supply before with LEDs hooked up. And I didn't realize it was set to 12 volts and the LEDs had no, <laughs> there was no resistor. So when the LED got power, it blew up. It literally shattered. And it, I mean, it was a uh, three millimeter, but it was, it's kind of surprising when something like that happens. So now, <clears throat> simply a matter of putting this back together and oh by the way guys this is the engine detail that I pulled out of this one there's only I think there's only two of the ones with that gold one and I'm working on the current currently I'm working on the other gold one so the other one of these hopefully is just like this and it'll come out really really easy <clears throat> <laughs> Never let the smoke out. It's funny when your uh, com guy or your uh, computer guys, when they inadvertently let the smoke out, or back in the '90s, I had a I had a computer technician. She was brand new at the job, and she couldn't figure out how to get the CD back out of the uh, CD drive. It was a five and a quarter floppy. So to put the engine back on, it's a reversed order. That ring plugs into that hole. There's a lug and there's a pin, a lug where the screw goes in and they have to line up as well. Once everything is in place, it's just one screw that holds it on. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Charlie, come here. Oh, Murphy. Murphy and Tyson, two of the boys, the fur dog, fur babies. I would hold them up, but they would both freak out. They're large, they're small dogs, but they're large enough that they just lose their minds if you pick them up. So screws back in there. It's nice and snug. Before I do anything else, let me rerun this wire where it's supposed to be. If it'll fit, because I think this wire is actually bigger. Yes, actually, they say it's red five. To me, it's just an X-Wing. It is supposed to be Luke Skywalker's, who, in the first trilogy, he was the key person, but now it's, you know, he was still a key person throughout the rest of the series but I kind of I'm not sure about the way they ended his his arc really wasn't that impressed with the uh, last three mil movies where they just rehashed the original movies I'm going to try and get this in here, but as you saw on the one that I actually took apart on camera, it doesn't matter if they're in there or not. These wires are definitely thicker than the original. And I trimmed my thumbnails, so I can't push them in very well. Okay, so that's in. The next part goes in. This goes back on. And this 
just wanted to let you guys see this detail. We will be doing it, or I will be doing it shortly. This is the piece. These actually glue in. This is the piece that is off of that yellow part. This is a single part right here. This is a single part. All four of these, Murphy! All four of these on either side are parts by themselves. I actually had to glue those in. This is a much better representation of the way that these pipes are supposed to go. I, like I said, I finally figured out, and I'm, I'll be on my fourth one this time, finally figured out because the pictures don't identify them very well where each of these goes. So now, this is truly a kit for somebody who can sort this stuff out. That has got to fit down inside there first. And that one's in where it's supposed to be. Screw to hold this detail part in. Part of this is actually visible, so I'm not too bad, too upset about the amount of detail that isn't. I'm honestly, I'm not upset at all about the detail that is hidden because we all do it. We all put lots of details into the models we're building even if they're never going to be seen again. This part then will go back on here. That was not part breaking. That's actually how tight that fits into that hole. Where did I put it? Oh, there. That deta detail part, which is just snugged on there like that. This, and it's very important on this piece here that you don't catch the wires. Wires should go through there. right like that, where they're not pinched. Three screws to hold this in. And I'm probably, according to the book, I'm doing this out, all out of order, I think. I'm not too concerned about it because I know how it came apart. back in place. And on this one, No glue is needed because I didn't break off those pins when I took it off the first time. Kind of surprised me I broke the pins on the other one. Let's see. Yep, that one goes in there like that. Actually, you know what? Leave that off until it got this in here. Down like that. Let me look at the one that I have not taken apart yet. Make sure that goes towards the flat spot, goes towards the engine. Of course, don't be me if I look, there's a gap, there's a cutout right there for the wires to go through. So 
that makes sense. That's down, that's down. That's back on. Because this keeps falling off, actually I'm not gonna glue it. They might they may decide to come out with a mod. I, no, I can't glue it. I'm gonna glue it with Elmer's though. They may come out with a mod that I have to have for the lasers, or I may have to fix the lasers. Because I got a couple of them that look to me like they're a little bit dim. If they don't all match, I'll be taking them apart to figure that out. But let me glue this back in here so that it doesn't keep falling off and I don't start, I don't panic because I lost it. Thanks, Eric. Okay, and that's one. The rest of them I'm gonna do off camera because you saw it, breakage, I hate breakage. And it's complicated and kind of difficult to, uh, <laughs> difficult to do it and pay attention to you guys. You would think, and the, inst the instructions themselves, building the kit itself is not, it, it's really straightforward and it, the instructions are fantastic. I don't even read the instructions. I look at the pictures and that's how I build the kits. That's how good the instructions are because they are, they're step-by-step -step pictures. They show each thing that you have to do. This mod came with no instructions. And I don't fault Gus for that at all because it's pretty straightforward. LED has to go in here. <laughs> where What's going to be interesting is trying to figure out where this little Arduino board goes. But this plugs into the main board on the uh, ship. So this will plug in next to it. This will sit in there somewhere right next to it. And I'm curious if I'm going to need, if there's going to be a power plug here that I can plug it into, or if I'm going to have to actually solder it onto the board. And then with the rest of these lights, I am probably going to get the acrylic bridge, or bridge, the acrylic cockpit, so that these lights are actually well worth what, the, you know, what I paid for them. It's a good little board if you decide to do the or the X-Wing, I would consider it, especially, you know, that you're already paying upwards of $1,600 for the kit. Might as well put in a couple, two or $300 worth of mods. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and unplug all the wires from it so you can actually see the board. It's a, what's on the board is a micro Arduino. Arduino. I don't know how clear that is. You know. Let's try this. I'm deviating from what everybody does. We all hold our hands up. What about the back, white background? Oh, it doesn't like the white background at all. There. That's probably the best it's going to get. But yeah, it is, I recognize it as an Arduino. And it's funny because if I ever need to reprogram it, the USB port 
is right above the power port and there's no way to get a, a uh, plug on there. All right, guys, I am going to call this one a wrap. I think my wife's about to make dinner and so I'm gonna go and give her a hand. And add a fruit to <laughs> drink it. I wonder if they heard you, sweetheart. <laughs> So what I should do, actually, because you guys will do the same to me, thing to me that I still do to to uh, Kenny and Kelly. Hey, Andrea, what's for dinner? <laughs> Not today. Oh, cool. No dinner. So I'm going to call it call this a uh, video, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one.